Hey you guys, welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to talk about Josh Duggar and those interrogation tapes that came out recently on my channel. I'll link them in the description box below if you haven't watched them or listened to them. Take a listen to them because this is the car raid where they first approached Josh about someone downloading CSAM CP on the computer in his office. So listen to it. So today we're going to talk about what did Josh tell the FBI in those recordings and how it could affect his appeal or how it will affect his appeal. So it's been about six weeks since Josh Duggar was convicted on CP CSAM charges, but even to this day, we're still getting to hear some of the information that finally put him behind bars that uh, led to him being convicted. The Daily Mail was able to obtain the audios from this interview due to the Freedom of Information Act. So these videos, like I said, they were published for the first time like last week, last Wednesday, I think it was, that I uploaded them to my channel. And they help highlight just like the absurdity of what he's going to say in his appeal. To shine light on Josh's innocence is to say, this person did it. So that's what they're doing in his appeal from what I've been told and even what people are reporting at this point, the defense attorneys will be arguing that Josh was framed by Caleb Williams. So the defense is basically going to say that it was Caleb Williams who used Josh's office and his office computer to download CSAM. However, um, the photos of the office highly undermine that argument and I'm going to kind of talk to you guys about why. So the structure of the office alone is not large enough for two people to occupy at once without the other person knowing what you're looking at on the computer. So the office is so small, right, that if Caleb was busy framing Josh, like downloading the CP that's the CSAM and playing it for long enough and then closing out of it. If Josh Duggar is in the building with him, he would have to know what was playing on that computer. He would literally be so close to him because the building itself is not that big. Or at any given second, say he wasn't within eye shot at the moment that Caleb starts downloading it. It would take just a second for him to walk around and then bam, he could see it. So that doesn't make sense. Also, there was a digital combination lock on the door, which makes it very unlikely that anyone could come or go from the facility without Josh's acknowledgement and permission. So say this Caleb Williams decided to go to the car dealership when Josh wasn't there to download it. You know, that way he don't have to worry about Josh walking over two steps and seeing what he's doing. Say he was like, okay, we're closed on a Sunday. I'm gonna go on Sunday and I'll do it on a Sunday. Well, there's a digital combination lock on the door, um, which I would have to imagine Josh is just not handing out to people. And some locks will notify you when they've been entered. Uh, so, you know, say it's one of those that Josh gets an alert, like, hey, someone just opened the door to your building. And surely I would have to imagine he would have something like that just in case, right? So that alone makes no sense. Say... Josh was outside showing a vehicle to someone and Caleb is inside the place and he's trying to hurry up and download this. Um, from where he would be sitting behind the computer, I think the only window uh, that he would be able to see out of is right here to the left. And there was no cars on that side from the photos that I looked at. So the cars would be in front. I don't think there's straight eye shot from the desk to the front to actually see the majority of the cars. So there is just no way that someone could sit in the office with Josh there and go through the process of multiple times downloading and viewing it without Josh having knowledge. And I don't think Caleb would be able to go to the car dealership without um, Josh being aware. We know there was, like I said, the digital combination lock on the door. So, you know, despite the theories that 
Josh's legal team are pushing, the most obvious explanation remains the likeliest one, and that is the CSAM was downloaded by the man who owns the property, the business, the computer, and who has a long history of predatory behavior, and that being Josh Duggar. Also, more lies that I want to talk about that became even more apparent with the audios is Josh claiming that he did not know a lot about computers or, or anything like that. When they first asked him if his office uses a conventional Wi-Fi setup, Josh provided a, a, a pretty complex answer. I'm like, what do they mean conventional Wi-Fi setup? I'm not sure what that means, but Josh knew exactly what they were talking about and he answered. He said, we've had several different things. In fact, last week I changed it. He said, I think there's three routers in there. I honestly can't remember, but we had it daisy chained so we could send it out over the lot so we could get to each edge to be able to take pictures and things like that to post them. What the heck is daisy chain? And also, when we're listening to the audio and I heard him say the word daisy, I immediately thought daisy Daisy's destruction and it irked me, but I don't know what this means when they're asking, you know, uh, does the office use a conventional Wi-Fi setup? And then his answer is like, we've had several. In fact, I changed it last week. There's three routers, I think, um, but we had it daisy chained. I'm like, what does this mean? And what did it, they mean about that? So obviously, you know, he knows a little bit more about computers than what he put on. He told them in the audio that because their cell service wasn't great, that he had two routers in there hooked up. One of them is more long ranged and one is closer up. Um, I, I think I know what that means, uh, meaning uh, one router, the range that the Wi-Fi will go out uh, is further it's long range, so further out it'll go, further out. Um, and then one is closer up, so it handles everything maybe inside the office. You know, but still, someone that's not super high tech, which is what Josh's defense team basically said, everyone that knows Josh talks about how he has, it's not just basic knowledge of technology and computers, that he's very knowledgeable about it. But his defense team claimed that he was not knowledgeable when it come to computers and things like that and technology. So obviously he knows what he's talking about and he obviously has a clear understanding of his business's Wi-Fi configurations, right? Um, so like I said, this is significant because his lawyers previously argued that he's basically computer illiterate and his answer, at least to me, prove that he's not as illiterate as I am when it comes to computers. Um, another thing was they asked if his Wi-Fi is password protected. Josh gives another incriminating answer. He says, I believe one of them is, but I think one of them is more of like a guest network. And I think that's why we have them separated right now. Last week, I changed the configuration on the router because the one was open, the main one. So if you follow Josh's case closely, then you know the passwords factored into the courtroom drama in a major way. So basically what he's saying here, I think, <laughs> um, you know, when you go to log on to someone's Wi-Fi, they were asking, do you have to put in a password? And he was saying that he thinks, yes, one of them you have to put into a password, but another one you don't and you sign on as a guest, like McDonald's or Walmart. You go to McDonald's or Walmart and you just select the guest and you're able to access the Wi-Fi. So that's what he's saying. And then he said that the week prior, he changed that because the one was open, the main one was open, um, which I felt like maybe he said that. So like, oh, so up until a week ago, someone car shopping could have been using their Wi-Fi, you know? Um, so maybe it kind of gave him an out. But either way, like I said, it plays a factor into what went on in the courtroom. So prosecutors argued that the network and the computer used to download the CSAM were both protected by passwords that were only known to Josh. The defense claimed that even if that were true, the passwords could have been easily guessed by an employee. So they're attempting to place the blame on Caleb Williams, um, an attempt to pin this crime on Williams, Josh's lawyers are taking the argument even further and claiming that this particular employee knew the password and had full access to everything within Josh's office, including the private Wi-Fi connection. So like I said, he knew the password. He could get onto it. So we think it's, it's being uh, 
assumed that they're planning on arguing that Josh tinkered with the security settings a week earlier than shared the new information with Williams, even though he would have already had a serious suspicion um, about him at this time, surely, right? I mean, at other points in the interview, he tried to kind of come off as ignorant about the internet setup, uh, his office's internet setup. So while at some points in the interview, he definitely seemed to have more knowledge than his defense team said at the trial, but then other parts of the interview, he would try to come across as like, he didn't really know. I don't know. I don't know what's going on here. It's like, it's your office. You know what's going on. When he was asked about how many of the devices contain the peer-to-peer -peer program, uh, such as the Tor browser, which he used to download the CSAM, Josh said probably all, as though it's like customary for an office computer uh, at a used car dealership to have a uh, Tor browser or to use peer-to-peer -peer file sharing. I don't think it is because it's to access the dark web. So why would you need it? Uh, but he said probably all of them. At one point, something also that struck me as odd is when uh, Josh kind of started to understand what the nature of this investigation was about. He said, I have quite a few questions about it. I'm just, I'm curious. You're saying these images being uploaded are images being downloaded, which really blew my mind and it really made me think something. I think he asked that twice. Like, so are images being uploaded or downloaded? And I'm like, either he's really just trying to play dumb here about not knowing what's going on or Josh Duggar has potentially uploaded images and he's trying to figure out if he's been busted with that or if it's known that images have been uploaded, right? So either playing stupid again or he's uploaded images and he's trying to figure out if they know. Um, so that, that kind of took me off guard and I was like, what's really going on here? Has he uploaded images? Um, but if so, I would think that they would know that, that they would have figured that out somehow. Josh's office computer also had a program called Covenant Eyes, which his uh, wife Anna used to monitor his internet activity. And this was supposed to keep him from uh, viewing things like CSAM. If he was to, she would get a report about it. Josh, however, set up a Linux partition that enabled him to use a separating software system on the same computer. Uh, therefore, sidestepping the monitoring software. It sidestepped Covenant Eyes. So, he just kind of went around it. So, everything that he did back here, Covenant Eyes had no idea. Now, his lawyers claim he doesn't possess the level of expertise that would enable him to pull off this kind of maneuver or any of these maneuvers to download the CSAM, all this, uh, to keep it from Anna, to download the Linux partition. He He's not capable. But... Josh has actually boasted about his technological capabilities in the past. And like I said, people that know Josh well has as well. Like family, friends, it's been said that Josh is really good with computers. It's been talked about on the show. Um, other friends have come out to say, like, we knew Josh was good at computers. But his defense team, they're playing that. He, there's no way he could pull that off. He doesn't know enough about computers or technology. Um, so I think the... Audios coming out will absolutely help, once again, the prosecutors when the defense comes to say it was Caleb Williams. Uh, things in the office, there's no way that someone, another person would have been in there downloading that without the person, the second person catching on. So Josh being so technically inclined and knowing what he does know about computers, especially enough to download a Linux partition, sidestep Covenant Eyes. Surely, he would pick up on the fact that someone was downloading something because he downloaded the Linux partition, right? He downloaded that. Um, so, surely, he would have figured it out himself. We always knew that this appeal was coming. Apparently, anytime you lose a case, you file the appeals. It's just part of the process. Just it's just a part of what happens. Even if you don't believe you're going to win, you filed the appeals. So we knew that it was coming. However, I don't think um, they're going to be able to prove that he was framed, especially with all the evidence that they have. It would make it impossible, in my opinion. 
So you guys leave me your thoughts in the comment section below. What do you guys think? Are you guys looking at it from the standpoint that I'm looking at it as well? Um, the picture showing how tiny the office is, the you know, where the windows are, um, the outside, where Josh would have to walk around to show the cars. There's no way the person inside would be able to keep the eye on him to make sure he didn't walk in to catch them. Um, the digital combination on the door he wasn't going to be able to be there without Josh having knowledge of it. The passwords and everything. You guys leave me your thoughts about that in the comment section below. Make sure you give this video a huge thumbs up. If you are not subscribed to my channel yet, please do me a huge favor and hit that subscribe button down below. As I'm trying to get to 50,000 subscribers, I'm so close. So please hit the button down below. And until next time, I'll see you guys later. Goodbye, everyone.